National Catholic Register. This is Register Radio, bringing light and clarity to the news and topics that affect your life. Abortion has moved back into the center of American politics, and the struggle to protect the unborn has become one of the biggest issues heading into the 2020 presidential election. As the rhetoric heats up, so too does the spiritual battle that underlies the struggle to end abortion in our country. This week on Register Radio, we discuss the spiritual ramifications of working to save the unborn. We talk to Father John Paul Mary of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word and Register Digital Assets Managing Editor Elisa Murphy. I'm Jeanette DeMello, Editor-in-Chief of the National Catholic Register and co-host of Register Radio. I'm joined in studio by Matthew Bunsen, my co-host and senior editor of the Register. Matthew, great to have you. Always a joy to be here in studio with you in Alabama. Very good. (laughs) Very good. Well, it's funny that we're talking here in Alabama because this has become kind of a ground zero for the abortion battle across the United States with the recent passage and signing by the governor of Alabama of... uh, what uh, is clearly uh, a bill designed to get to the Supreme Court. It essentially ends abortion in Alabama in all practical purposes. But this is just one bill of a host uh, that have been approved by state legislatures all across the country. Heartbeat bills that we're seeing in Ohio and elsewhere, dismemberment bills that we're seeing in places like Michigan. And on the other side, we're seeing some of the most radical abortion bills being approved for in the in support of abortion in places like New York and one that was uh, proposed in Virginia uh, that are tantamount to infanticide. That's right. And and all of this is for the pro-life community, a response to the more than a million unborn children that are killed every year here in our country, in the United States. Uh, the, the human toll of this is staggering when you consider not only those unborn children, but their mothers uh, and uh, their, their siblings, uh, the, the, the whole community that is impacted uh, by abortion. And the spiritual reality is heavy, uh, and that's why we have invited uh, Father John Paul uh, to be on our show today. Uh, welcome. You're also here in studio with I us. I did not have to come very far. <laughs> That's right. right. down the hill. Our <laughs> friary is located on the EBTN uh, campus, right. so it's it's easy for you to get a somebody to talk. And no, it's very good because usually we're talking by <laughs> Skype or, you know, by phone. And, and so it's always nice when I can see my guests and, and have just a really good uh, discussion. And, and what a discussion this is. I mean, it has been a very very difficult time. And just in the last week with this abortion law, there have been some very dangerous spiritual movements about. And one of those is something you brought to my attention, and that's why I wanted to have you. There was a call for a public hexing here in Alabama of the state legislature here, uh, of the members of that legislature, uh, a public hexing, a call for uh, all the dark arts yes. uh, uh, to direct all of their energy and anger um, in the spiritual world uh, to these people. Yes, uh, the reality of evil uh, is really is real, and this public hexing or cursing uh, took place uh, on Saturday night. Um, they say it was a full moon outside, and they were calling upon uh, Satanists witches, sorcerers, uh, all different types of spiritual gurus, it said, to come out and to partake and to join in on this uh, public manifestation of uh, really, like you said, hatred upon the Alabama uh, legislator, um, those that signed into law uh, this um, wonderful pro-life bill right? Uh, that would protect um, children uh, from every instance. Um, and I couldn't, I can't help but think that, first of all, this is Alabama, like um, Matthew was saying, and who used to live in Alabama and who was buried in Alabama, but Mother Angelica. Mm-hmm. She lived here for so many years, um, and she prayed for an end to abortion. Mm-hmm. She started the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Hansville, and under the, um, they have a statue there uh, of the Divine Child Jesus. And that statue of the divine child Jesus was placed there very specifically for women that would come there that were seeking healing, mm. that were hurt by the culture, uh, that maybe have had abortions themselves, that they would look at that statue and see 
first of all, our Lord as a child and know that there is no evil in this world that cannot be forgiven, that God is literally holding his heart out for them. Um, she prayed for constantly for an end to abortion. And I can't help but think that she is in heaven interceding. Yeah. I can't help but think that. Yeah. And we can't say that definitively. I know. <laughs> yes. I know this. But I, I just, I'm just in reading into this, um, I can't help but think that, uh, you know, because this happened in Alabama first, that you know, Mother Angelica somehow has something to do, to do with this, her prayers in general. Absolutely. You know, it's, you know. And it is time to call upon the communion of saints. I mean, I was going to ask you when you saw this. I know somebody sent it to you. Um, yeah. They saw it on Instagram, this, this call for this curse. Yeah. And um, and it's natural um, that they would send it to you, uh, you know, a friar, a symbol of uh, of God in our in our midst. As you wear your habit, you know, you kind of call to to attention this need for prayer. What was your response? My response is to pray right away. Mm-hmm. And I told a few friends of mine. I I forwarded it to all the friars, so they were made aware. It was kind of stirring. I mean, it's it's jarring when you see that. Um, uh, kind of call Absolutely. toward uh, evil um, and a call, a call toward divisiveness. And we're all used to receiving uh, prayer requests, and I receive them all the time. And uh, so we know what it's like to, uh, a call for prayer is a call for the Christian to offer sacrifice, to offer prayer for those that are suffering. But this is a, a different type of call. I and mean, it was really quite jarring to, um, for me to see this, yeah, especially in such a public way. It reminds me of the fact that back uh, during the Kavanaugh, the Brett Kavanaugh hearings yeah. uh, for his nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court, it was eventually approved by the United States, and, and he's on the Supreme Court now, yeah. that a very similar call went out, uh, that he was cursed, he was hexed by groups of black witches, of those who practice this type of the, the, the dark arts, why? What is it about this topic, and it was specifically targeting Brett Kavanaugh over abortion, the connection between what the reality of what abortion is and this type of a curse? I think it's, well, when we think about human life, human life is a fundamental right that all of us have. And it really it's a mockery of the incarnation, I would say, when it comes down to us, that God became man and dwelt among us. He became a child in the womb. And any attack at life is, I look at as as an attack at uh, Christianity, an attack at uh, Jesus Christ himself. Um, but there is no evil that can be um, surmounted in this world. I mean, light and goodness and truth and charity always win the battle. It's not as if we're in this battle and there's the... Um, the dark side and the light side, like Star Wars. Um, there, the darkness, evil doesn't hold a candle to the power of Almighty God. I think people need to keep that in mind in this uh, spiritual battle, in the culture, in their families, in their workplaces, that they need to call to mind that God's strength and the truth of uh, the gospel will always prevail. He's already won the battle. The battle obviously is being played out Mm -hmm. in our lives, um, in the culture, uh, but we need to enter into that uh, equipped and prepared. Absolutely. You know, and there are, there are two things I want to get to. Um, One is there are some who are on the front lines, and those are the abortion clinics. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the abortion clinics. Yes, those are big time front lines where people go and pray. The pro life community goes and prays, and they're on this front line of battle. There's a, there the pro life pregnancy centers that are another line of battle. I want to talk about about that in a minute. But you know, when you talk about the light and the darkness, it's true. The light has overcome the darkness in Christ Jesus. Yes. At the same time, we are still seeking. Um, to, to bring souls to Christ. Yes. And so um, this is where this battle um, that we are a part of is so um, so challenging because sometimes we are on a different side of this issue than our friends and family members. Sure. And redemption is being played out. You still, I mean, objectively, redemption has been accomplished in Christ Jesus. 
he has um, objectively won the battle, but that objective battle has to be subjectively lived out in us. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. It, it needs to be lived out in you. It requires and our will. Me. Yes, we need to constantly say no to sin and yes to virtue, to God. And that's lived out in our lives. Um, and we see that being heated up in the midst of the world. One of the I should say, one thing that keeps coming to mind is uh, one of my professors, Father Frederick Miller, he used to say to us, and this is in the lines of Mother Teresa, uh, he used to teach Mother Teresa and give retreats to her. Hmm. He used to say that no matter how much evil that there is in the world, one act of heroic charity done out of love of God is greater than all of the evil from the, from the fall to the end of time. Wow. Now, that's hard. That's hard to imagine. That's that. That's hard for us because, because one act of, one act of love, one act of love done out of love of God is theological, and God's love is creative. There's mm-hmm. nothing creative about evil. Evil is a twisting of that which is good. It's not. Evil is not creative. So. When God is working through the human person, through the human personality, as, as uh, we can be characters and we can have our temperaments. And, right. you, you know, Mother Angelica showed that, you know, we, we um, but when God works through the human person, it, it's, it's powerful. Like what you, see, you see what Mother Teresa did. You know, one act of love, one act of going out and picking up uh, a leper off the street, that's greater than all of the evil mess sure. in the world. You know, it reminds me of Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in doing good, hmm. you know, and um, to outdo ourselves and in generosity. goodness and generosity. And it also keeps in mind that whenever we see this kind of hatred, yeah. that our response can't be one of hatred, of, of anger. It needs to be one of peace and serenity, it, of total trust in God's providence and of love. And that's so crucial. And, and of faith. That, that the victory has yeah. been won. I know that you do um, some work with uh, crisis pregnancy yes. centers. Um, how are they weathering this uh, battle? So there's a local pregnancy center in Birmingham, Her Choice, um, which is somewhat known, I think, um, in the United States at least, because of Jim and Joy Pinto, right. uh, who worked there and Our run colleagues. it. colleagues. Mm-hmm. And now they have at home in Jim and Joy. So they're always talking about their pregnancy resource center and what it's like to run that. Um, one day after the bill was signed, um, I went down there because, and I, and I did not actually, I I didn't even plan to go down there. I was visiting somebody, an employee at EWTN who has cancer, but I was, after I was leaving, uh, the Kirkland clinic, just something kind of prompted me. I just, I just sensed like, just stop by her choice. And it was right down the street. I stopped by. And I walked in, and one of the employees said, they, were, they looked shocked to see me, and they said, we were just talking about you. Mm. We, just, we, we were just saying, Father John Paul needs to come down here, and there, here you are. And I'm like, well, I guess I was listening to the Holy Spirit, then my antenna was up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so they said what happened. Um, right outside of her choice, somebody had painted a clothes hanger with uh, Roe versus Wade saves lives right outside mm-hmm. of uh, the Pregnancy Resource Center, her choice, right outside the front door. They called the cops right away. Uh, the cop came down and was uh, appalled. Sure, right. Because she herself, the cop, said, I'm pro-life. I don't, I don't want this um, right. uh, Roe versus Wade. I don't like it any more than anybody else. Um, and they called the city. The city came down and took care of it right away, cleaned it. Great. Thanks be to God. Right. Um, but Jim Pinto told me that um, that was done throughout Birmingham. It wasn't done just at Here, her choice. Right. There were other places that that was done. So I almost looked at, at that as almost like a, a defilement mm-hmm. on something, a work of good, a work of charity. Um, so I said, Jim, would you mind if I, I'll go, I'm going to go into the chapel because... Um, I'm responsible for the chapel there. I asked our bishop if um, I could establish a chapel there and offer mass there once a month, which Wonderful. I did today. Mm-hmm. And um, and let me tell you, it makes the biggest difference in the world. 
And Jim, Jim and Joy will tell you that having the Blessed Sacrament and having Mass offered there on a monthly basis and knowing that our Lord is present in their Pregnancy Resource Center, it's the, it, the battle, actually Jim even said the battle intensified sure. mm-hmm. when our Lord's presence was there, but in a good way. Right, you know, sure. them well, it's knowing recognition that, of the mm-hmm. spiritual side of this, which we don't yes. do enough. Yes. Yeah. And, and real quick, the, yes. uh, I know we're going to be talking with Elisa uh, about some of the Just stories minutes, yeah. around the country mm-hmm. of relating to this. But uh, these incidents are not just here in Alabama. They're Everywhere. all across the country. What advice can you give to members of the pro-life movement uh, who are starting to feel intimidated? Some of them are actually being physically assaulted. Many of them are being verbally assaulted, as we, as we saw in Pennsylvania, yes. uh, in Missouri, and elsewhere. What kind of encouragement, what advice do you give to develop that virtue of fortitude? Well, first of all, pray before, during, and after. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just don't go out and think that um, um, you can do it by yourself. Um, you need to pray to protect yourself. So even before going out, pray that you can be a good witness. Uh, pray that you can be uh, a light shining in the darkness. Um, and I would also encourage people, if you can, do not go out by yourself. Mm-hmm. You always want to go out surrounded by, with other people, uh, with friends, with family. Um, I think the more people out there with you, the better. It's a better witness um, than just uh, one person. Right. But that being said, one person out there is beautiful and can do a, a world of difference and does do a world of difference. But to, to pray, Absolutely. Uh, re- re- stay in the state of grace, obviously. Um, receive the sacraments frequently. Um, and go to Holy Communion before you go out to pray. Yeah, and I and just like we started uh, our conversation uh, today before we got on to the onto air, it, we we started with a, a Saint Michael prayer, and um, and Saint Michael is 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 there to defend us in the battle, yeah. and um and and of course uh, there is Saint Benedict who also yes uh, is to protect us. Um, and wear a, a Saint Benedict medal, I would say. I think that's important. Um, everybody should have a Saint Benedict medal on their person. Uh, if it's not around your neck, but some, but because the medal is very powerful in the history of the church. And I would uh, just toss out uh, a name that's not familiar to too many people, Blessed Bartolo Longo. Yes, who yes. Who was a convert. At one point, he was uh, a, a priest in the Church of Satan uh, oh gosh, and wow. had a massive conversion mm-hmm. and is a blessed and is one of the, the great figures in the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre. I agree. Well, this is, uh, I think, very sound advice, um, even for those of us who work in the media covering these topics, because we're also on the front line. Uh, Father John Paul, thank you so much for for sharing with us um, what your experience has been and for backing us, most importantly, backing us with your prayers. It's definitely, it's a privilege and an honor. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, we'll be joined by Elisa Murphy. Uh, we'll be continuing this conversation about the spiritual, spiritual ramifications of abortion and this battle, but we'll also take a look at what's been going on across the country on social media and, you know, in, in locations like uh, abortion clinics and pro-life uh, pregnancy centers. This is Register Radio. More when we return. This Easter season, read for faith, read for truth, read for life by giving yourself the gift of EWTN's National Catholic Register. Easter inaugurates a joyous season of hope and renewal that brings us closer to God. Gain a deeper understanding of His love and providence in reading the Register. Make this Easter season even more meaningful. Try the Register for free today and get it delivered to your home, office, or parish. To get your six free issues, order online at ncregister.com forward slash radio or call 800-421-3230 and mention code radio. That's ncregister.com forward slash radio or call 800-421-3230 and mention code radio. The National Catholic Register. Read faithfully. 
Let's return to Register Radio on EWTN. Welcome back. I'm Jeanette DeMello, Editor-in-Chief of the National Catholic Register. I'm here in studio with Matthew Bunsen, who is my co-host on Register Radio, but also the Register Senior Editor. And we're joined by Elisa Murphy who is not in studio with us, who's joining us remotely. And you probably, uh, our listeners probably know Elisa Murphy from Morning Glory, but now she's working for the Register full-time. In the intro, I kind of got tongue-tied over her title, but the long and short of it is she is managing all of the Register's digital media. So she's managing our website, she's managing our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram accounts. It's a very big job. Uh, Elisa, we're so grateful to have you on board, and uh, you're doing great work. Well, it's great to be here, and one of the best benefits of the job is I get to hear from all of our readers and even all of our listeners from Register Radio. Uh, We get to hear your comments and concerns and questions, uh, and we definitely do take all of them into account with all the reporting and stories that we're working on. Absolutely. Every every day, in fact, we get a little idea of what's trending and what our, our readers and listeners are saying. So it's an important part of our work. Of course, we're um, talking about a topic that has just everyone everywhere talking. And, um, and it's the topic of uh, the abortion battle that our country is facing. Uh, we were talking specifically about Alabama's uh, law. And, Elisa, I thought it was important because... There's so much confusion out there about what this particular law does. I thought if we could just start there, what is the Alabama law and, um, and what does it do? Uh, it, 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 one of the things I've heard is that it criminalizes women who have abortions, uh, but that's not true. And that is simply not the case. Uh, you know, with, um, you were just speaking with Father John Paul, and he mentioned how life is a fundamental right. And Governor Kay Ivey just signed what she calls the Human Life Protection Act and is trying to do just that, is trying to protect human life. Um, She, when signing it, said to the many supporters, this legislation stands as a powerful testament to Alabamians' deeply held belief that every life is precious and that every life is a sacred gift from God. And the bill does... uh, criminalize abortion itself. It it makes abortion virtually um, illegal within the state, including uh, instances of rape and incest, but in no way, shape, or form does it vilify or criminalize a woman. What it does do is if you're an abortionist and you do perform an abortion, the the, the abortionist would find themselves uh, behind bars for... um, for um, a, a great length of time, it wouldn't be uh, prison. It, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be jail. It would be prison time. And uh, what's interesting to note on that is, um, you know, many of the uh, abortion supporters always cry that abortion is women's health, uh, when in fact we do know of states like California where you don't have to be a doctor to perform an abortion. Uh, it could be a nurse practitioner. It could actually also just be someone that's trained in uh, giving an abortion. So, right, um, and this is in Alabama. It does. It does. There's penalties for the doctor who performs the abortion. This is a sign. I mean, what you're what you're describing is it, the confusion out there is a sign of of how much much misinformation gets perpetuated not only by social media and the conversations that go on, but sometimes by the media themselves, um, by celebrities. I mean, we had uh, the vile cartoon uh, by Jim Carrey, and, and I mean, that was disgusting. It was horrific. He was basically portraying um, an abortion of uh, of the governor of, of Alabama, uh, s- saying some fetuses should be aborted before their governor. I mean, Wow, I, I, you just can you believe it? And and of course that kind of backfired. Uh, what 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 did you see on social media and uh, in the in other news news outlets, Alisa, of the response to to such vile cartoon as Jim Carrey's? Yeah, you know, at first um, everyone was outraged by the image, especially the pro life community, uh, because it does show the real true horror of abortion. Uh, and it showed, in essence, that Carrie was quite all right with 
extinguishing a soul in the womb, Mm -hmm. uh, crushing any hopes and desires that that child has uh, to become a governor of any state, including Alabama or president. Uh, So many pro-lifers actually, um, after thinking about it, somewhat applauded uh, what he did, because he really did show the true harsh reality uh, that is abortion. And uh, we've heard from many uh, voices we know from the pro-life community. Uh, Ben Shapiro, a notable conservative talk show host, said this is a great depiction of an abortion, clinically accurate and wiping out an individual human life. Right. It's, sad, uh, it's sadly it true. Too. Right. It's sadly true. Well, Matthew, we're seeing in. these efforts on social media and the part of the, the pro-abortion movement to either mock people or to use this sort of a vulgar cartoon in order to make their point. And yet they're constantly tripping over themselves and accidentally revealing the reality of abortion, or as we saw with Alyssa Milano, the, the power of abstinence and monogamy. Right, right. And, exactly, and, exactly. And, and basi- basically she was saying, let's, um, uh, let's, let's have a have sex ban- strike. A sex strike, yeah, we're, <laughs> right. you know, with conservative men. I'm like, okay, that's smart. Very good, very good. Yeah, and <laughs> another know? word for that would be abstinence. Abstinence, exactly. exactly. I mean, we're all good with. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting ridiculous, um, but it's also, I think, revealing the truth. Uh, it's just revealing the truth and the ugliness of this. There's no hiding behind cliches. There's no hiding behind um, fancy marketing and this is women's health. And it, this is the truth. That, and the battle is very, very ugly. Uh, Elisa, you, um, you have followed uh, the response of the pro-life community. Um, you, you have helped us in our editorial meetings see stories that we need to do of hope. Um, bring, bring to our listeners some of what we discuss and some of the stories we decide to do that are more hopeful. Sure. And just on, um, just on the note of what's occurring uh, in social media that is ever so hopeful is I never thought in a million years that Uh, abortion itself as a topic would be trending on social media because it's that big and in the hashtag I support a woman's right to be born being um, very um, and it's gotten a huge response many people are are, um, actually tweeting that and sharing that on Instagram Um, and in other states you know we've just seen today Governor Bell Edwards in Louisiana uh, is actually going to be signing a heartbeat bill uh, as Missouri uh, just passed. Interesting to note, you know, we always, you know, we look look at the Hollywood elite and many of, of the pro-abortion side, we always seem to think that with the strength of Planned Parenthood and the abortion lobby, that they, they kind of control things. But look at in the state of Louisiana, you have a Democratic governor saying he's going to sign that bill, that heartbeat bill, into law and he actually cites his own Catholic faith in being pro-life. Yeah, that's very positive. Uh, and uh, there's there's something I've been thinking about. A CNN host interviews an EWTN host on abortion. I mean, Elisa, wow. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was quite a moment last weekend. Uh, Brian Stelter on CNN invited our own Catherine Hadro uh, to come on the show uh, because... Because the abortion topic was being, you know, handled by media outlets across the board, many that normally steer clear of such a topic, uh, Catherine was able to talk about uh, the language that we yeah. use when we talk about this issue. I mean, we ourselves know with AP, uh, it's always anti-abortion, um, abortion activists, uh, pro-life is never never used. Right. Never used. And right, so uh, right. it was interesting to actually have a CNN host talk specifically about, I mean, verbatim saying, and, and uh, this network uh, actually has a whole entire show dedicated to the pro-life community. And uh, Catherine did a wonderful job in really talking about the great work she does and also reiterating uh, what we were talking about earlier, that in no way, shape, or form does this Alabama law criminalize women. Yeah, so I mean, it's just I feel as 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 much as this is a battle, 
um, a spiritual battle, and we're we have to be armored uh, with the truth and in all of the virtues. This is a wonderfully important moment, and I think that culturally, uh, this is a moment we have not been in in a very very long time where we can speak uh, such clear truth. Um, so. We're going to continue the discussion a little bit more uh, because there's, uh, I think, a lot more to talk about. Um, I think, uh, Elisa, we can just keep going for, for the podcast, okay? Okay. You want to join us, join back in? You can? Sure. Okay. I'm inviting Father John Paul back into the discussion. Okay, great. Okay. So... Elisa, yes, Catherine's moment was an incredible moment. I know that you've seen another, uh, uh, other very important opportunities uh, for us. Uh, one of them was last week when you encouraged us to uh, talk about um, uh, women who have been raped, sadly, who have been raped and who have uh, kept uh, their child and, and who are staunchly pro-life, who are, are, are continue to be protectors of life. Um, what have you seen on that topic? You know, there's been just so many powerful stories of women that um, are, are in fear and uh, quite traumatized by what's occurred to them, uh, being raped and sexually assaulted. Uh, and um, uh, many stories, people coming forward, sharing the true reality that they did indeed keep the child, and um, just the, the gift of the child in their own life actually le- lends to their healing. Right. They feel like the only way they were able to really get through that horror was to bring bring this uh, baby into the world and, and give, give love to this child um, in, in so many different ways, and you see how that doesn't really... You know, it's it's not a not a narrative you typically hear. Right. Um, and and we saw just the other day President Trump himself um, saying that there should be exceptions for rape and incest. Um, but I think that's the the true beauty of of what God offers in life is that even when um, you know when, when it's brought into this terrible state of rape, that there is still hope yeah. for many. And we know that. Um, uh, Project Rachel uh, does a great deal of help with some of these women struggling with this. And we've got a story that has uh, has moved to the top of our trending list, and it's on rape and adoption, one woman's story. And it, it is the story of someone who who was uh, violated and who, who offered that child for adoption. Uh, so interesting, that story. Um, one of our D.C. Uh, correspondents now, uh, she said, Wait a minute! I know that guy, really? the young the young man who yeah. is, is now a, you know a, uh, in his twenties, I believe. Um, but she said, "I grew up in a homeschooling group with that child. Uh, he was you know adopted and and uh, led a, has been leading a wonderful life." And and so it was just. I mean, these are real people. I mean, th- these are people who are our neighbors, uh, who sit next to us on the bus, or or you know, I mean, th- who have changed just, our lives exactly. because they're here. Exactly. And so I just, I, I, we need to bring that human dimension into this. It's not all about law and policy. It's about affecting real lives. And the pro-life community in no way is ignorant of, of this, these, women, these women's pain. They're yeah, we're com- yeah, we're compassionate. We want to reach out to them and help them with healing and, and show them mercy and goodness and kindness. And, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. Right. And there's so much discussion about this is a bunch of white uh, white people, you know, making these um, yeah. making these laws, and yeah, that's just that's not the case. You've got uh, beautiful voices like Alveda King, who mm. are who are speaking on behalf of her own community about uh, the the devastation of abortion. This just can't be painted with those uh, broad sweeping strokes the way the media tries to do well, it. Well, especially as I seem to recall, it was an all white, uh, essentially almost all white uh, Supreme Court that gave us the decision on Roe v. Wade. Right there you go. There you go. Yes, and they try to make the same argument with it being men are making all these de- all right. these decisions. And and look at the governor of Alabama, right? K. I. V. Yeah, female. Mm-hmm. And you know what? We are in National Foster Care Month right now. This month of May. And another note um, of the beautiful state of Alabama, I must say, 
They a are lot of people are saying that. Number one, number one, when it comes to foster care and adoption placement, mm. which is just amazing. It really speaks to the care and love for the family that the state has. And then just recently, just this past week, um, a, a popular um, cartoon children like to watch um, had a, a, a scene that showed some same-sex uh, marriage couple or something like that. And the state of Alabama said, no, we're not going to air it. Hmm. So it yeah, really I think this is the, uh, the so cartoon Arthur, Arthur, right? Wow, Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. Right. Arthur. Yeah, but we're kind of in this pivotal time where because, you know, people are making strong stands and putting their conscience where their mouth is, we are actually, people are having to pick sides, and it's just truly beautiful to see life winning. Yeah, I would I would encourage our, our, our listeners to um, to press the, the secular media. I mean, you, you know, I don't often encourage people, you know, continue to, to comment on those websites, but be, be charitable, yes. <laughs> you know? Send letters to the editor. Uh, get your voices heard in those forums because they, they're not representing you. Uh, they're not representing a, a majority of the country. Um, they come from a different worldview, and it's not representative. And that's, it's important for us to, re- to reflect back and saying, wait a minute, oh, you know, this is, this is the reality that we're living. And you can do that on social media, yes, you know, um, but, but, and that's super important, as Elisa knows, it's her work. Um, but to do that with the mainstream media as well is, is very, very important. And, and with us too, li- you know, we listen, we started off this segment talking about how we listen to what our readers say and what our listeners uh, say and how they give us feedback. It's, it's hugely important. Well, we need to make those voices heard in other newsrooms as well. So I'm all out of words myself, but maybe my, my guests want to join in with something more. Well, the one thing that's worth adding here, and, and it goes to your, your point, Jeanette, that uh, one of the, the things that the, the abortion movement loves to try to impress upon the supposed pro-life movement mm-hmm. is that you're alone. Mm-hmm. That there aren't very many people who follow what you think. You're extreme. Who, you're extreme, who share your views, that you are a tiny minority in the country. And that's exactly what the devil does as yes. well, that you are alone, that you are helpless. Mm. He's the great accuser. You know, he's the one that accuses us. He wants us to, to feel isolated like we're alone. But the reality is we're not alone. Uh, I think the, the pro-life movement, those who you know, want uh, life to be cherished at all stages, is increasing even more so in our country. And I think we've seen that throughout the past 25, 30, 40 years. Amen to that. You know, and another, another great place where these conversations are occurring are in front of my neighborhood clinic, where pro-life um, supporters have been out every day, even before any of these headlines started, praying uh, for those babies and those mothers that are, are walking in uh, weighing this decision, um, and you know we've had now because of the movie Unplanned, um, more people coming out to the Planned Parenthood clinics. Yes. Yeah, it's I'm going to really re- are coming out there because there's no. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm going to recap a little bit because your your sound quality is getting bad, but you're talking about how many people are coming out to um, pray. Um, and to uh, represent hope and light at, at Planned Parenthood clinics. Um, um, and many people have been inspired to do so uh, by the movie Unplanned. And, and y- your sound quality was breaking up, so I wanted to make sure people heard that. Um, but yes, it has encouraged a lot of people. We've um, been trying to follow that movement as well um, on the register, um, and making yes. sure we're giving voice to, to those people who are coming out. Um, and also giving people ideas of, of other things that they can do. Um, but, I'm, you know, to close our, you know, our discussion, I'm going to start with, uh, uh, go back to where we started with the, the need for prayer and to always um, to, to clothe ourselves in, in prayer um, and as we engage in any way on this issue. And, and so, Father, would you offer a blessing as we conclude, and then I'll wrap up our show. Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to suffer, to die, to redeem mankind. 
to send the Holy Spirit among us to renew the face of the earth. We ask that the same Spirit enliven and embolden your faithful people to be a culture of life and a civilization of love. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go Amen. in peace. So thank Amen. you both for being my guest. And Elisa, you know, I wish our audience could see you because you are uh, pregnant and, yes. and a, a wonderful witness to uh, the sanctity of life. And, and so we pray for you and your unborn, unborn child. And we invite all of our listeners to go to ncregister.com. Check out the register and all of our news analysis and commentary. Thank you for joining us here on Register Radio on EWTN. For Matthew Bunsen and our producer, Jeff Burson, I'm Jeanette DeMello. Until next week, God bless you. For more information about the National Catholic Register and about Register Radio, go to ncregister.com. Podcasts of Register Radio are posted on ncregister.com and on ewtn.com. Join us next week at this time for Register Radio on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network.